This is going to be a short presentation on camera setup and troubleshooting in Image Pro 10. Image Pro 10 has extensive live imaging capabilities, which includes, but is not restricted to, uh, live extended depth of field, live tiling, live measurements, and live image comparison. And to access this excellent range of functionality, you require a supported camera and that the camera is running correctly with Image Pro 10. And in order to meet the second requirement, we require Image Pro 10 with a licensed capture module, the appropriate camera driver installed, and the capture interface installed. And this must be installed after Image Pro 10 for reasons that will become obvious later in the pre presentation. So when you want to check that your camera you're thinking of selling is uh, fully supported in Image Pro 10, I'm sure you're all familiar with our, with our website. And you'll find on our home page in the top right hand corner a link to the support page. If you follow that link to the support page, at the bottom there you find a link to the hardware support page. And if you follow that link, you see this series of drop down menus in which you can find your software product, operating system, device type, manufacturer, and model. So I'm interested in uh, Image Pro 10, of course, and the 64 bit version of Image Pro 10. My operating system is Windows 10 64-bit. And I'm looking to find out whether my camera is supported. So I select my camera. And under the camera manufacturer, I'm interested in a camera made by Yenoptic. And the specific model is the Gryfax Procyon. And when I click all of those, when I select all of those drop-down options and hit the search button, the website updates and it shows me that the camera is fully supported. And it shows me which um, capture interface is required. And it has a convenient download link to download the capture interface. It also has a link to the manufacturer's website where I can download the camera driver. If you change to the What's Supported tab of this page of the website, we can see here that for my particular camera, it's supported only for Image Pro Premiere 9.3 and Image Pro 10. OK, so if we assume we've already installed Image Pro 10, and my camera driver. And we now install the capture interface. We'll see an installer like this. And the installer will find all of the potential target applications on the installation computer. And you can see here that on my computer, I have several potential targets. In most cases, you're probably just going to see Image Pro 10 as the target application. And when you click Next in the installer, you can see why the software has to be, in, why Image Pro 10 needs to be installed before the capture interface, because the capture interface is going to install files directly to the Image Pro 10 folder. So you can see here it's going to the Program Files folder, Media Cybernetics, Image Pro 10. And when you get to the end of the capture interface setup, you do get a convenient reminder that you need a camera driver. This is shown whether or not the driver is currently installed, so don't be alarmed if you see it having already installed your driver. Hopefully then, when you open Image Pro 10, and you open the, the you just select the Capture tab and the Configure, the Capture Configure Wizard, you should see that your camera is selected as a valid capture device. At this point, you can either finish the wizard, or you can hit Next if you wish to configure calibrations and objective as part of the wizard. But here I click Finish, and you can see that the capture controls are available to me. And at this point, you can go on to capture your calibration images and associate these calibrations with objectives, which is a really nice way to finish off your installation. However, there may be circumstances in which things don't go fully to plan. And when you run the configure wizard, the hardware configuration wizard, you may see this warning that no cameras are configured. So what do we do to troubleshoot this situation? The first thing we recommend is that you check the device manager. So the camera should be visible in the device manager with no issues. If the camera fails to appear, it may not be powered on, it may not be connected correctly to the computer, or it may be broken. So here's a situation that we would see if the camera is powered off or broken. And we see under imaging devices, there's no camera listed. And we don't see any other devices with exclamation marks in the device manager. Here's a situation where the camera is on, it's connected and working correctly, but the driver has yet to be installed. So here we see listed under other devices with an exclamation mark a USB 3 camera. The solution to this problem is, of course, just to in install the camera driver. And here's a reminder of the situation we're looking for. So under imaging devices here, we're seeing a USB 3 camera. So the camera is switched on. 
is working and the driver is correctly installed. The next troubleshooting step you might want to take uh, would be to check the camera with the manufacturer's software. So the camera should always work with the manufacturer's software, and this is generally installed with the driver package. So examples of uh, manufacturer software include QCapture, this is QImaging's software. We have PVCam tests from Photometrics and Infinity Capture for Luminera cameras. If the camera fails with the manufacturer's software, it's probably wise to consult the camera manufacturer and see if you can figure out what the problem is. The next thing to check is that the ImagePro uh, software installation folder, there should be a pair of files named with the following naming convention. And these are the files that are installed by the capture interface. So they should be named MC capped source, then the camera name, and then the suffix DLL. And there should be a partner file named MC capture with the camera name and then the suffix .vreg. So examples of real names that you should find are things like McCapped source Q imaging DLL and its partner McCapture lib QI .vreg. And here we have another pair, McCapture source Gryfax.dll. So these were the ones that are installed for the camera I'm working with, the Inoptic Gryfax. And there's its partner file, McCapture Gryfax.vreg. So if I look in the installation folder on my computer, so here I'm looking in the C drive, program files, media cybernetics, the image pro 10 folder. I find my Gryfax pair of files, which tells me that the Gryfax capture interface has been correctly installed. And I can also see a pair of files there, the Q imaging files, that suggest that the Q imaging capture interface has been correctly installed. So that's good. The next thing we might need to be concerned about is that the, uh, the capture DLL that I've just described can be blocked by Windows security. So Windows 10 is very suspicious about DLLs that are installed at a different time to the actual software installation and it may block them. So if we right click on the capture DLL and we look at the properties, the dialog, what we want to see is what we see on the left here, which is uh, no warnings. And I would expect in this case, the camera to work. You may find, however, the situation that I'm displaying on the right-hand side, where we get a little warning at the bottom of the dialog saying that this file came from another computer and might be blocked to help protect this computer. So in this case, I would expect the camera to not work until we take the obvious troubleshooting step of clicking the unblock button, in which case the camera should start working the next time you restart Image Pro. Another problem you can have with the DLL is that it can be blacklisted by virus scanning software for the same reason that Windows blocks them. So you may need to check with local IT support and ensure that the file is not restricted. Another trouble, troubleshooting step you can make is to navigate to a file that you'll find tucked away in the Users folder. So if you go to the Users, check in the current Users folder, look for App Data, Roaming, Media Cybernetics, Image Pro 64-bit, and then you'll find a folder for the Image Pro version you're working with. In there, there's a file called lastcapture.icqs. And this records and reloads the user's capture settings between sessions. Corruption of this file can prevent the camera being recognized and loaded. The solution is to delete this file and restart Image Pro 10. Just a quick warning is that the app data folder is by default hidden. So you have to make sure that you're showing hidden items on your computer. In Windows 10, you do this from the Explorer by selecting the View tab and then selecting the Hidden Items box. Another problem you may encounter is that when you load Image Pro, you may find that instead of having a Capture tab, you see a Home tab. This is indicative of, not, of there not being a Capture module loaded. The way to check this is if you go to the Help menu on the right-hand side of the application, and you open the About Image Pro dialog and then select the Licenses tab, you can check to see whether the capture module is included or has been disabled. Here I see the word excluded. So a user has disabled the capture module. The solution is, of course, just to check the box and make the module available. It may also be the case that the capture module has been purchased but not yet licensed. So the solution, again, is to go to the Help menu to choose the license activation wizard and enter the unlocking code for the capture module. Excuse me. In either case, when you restart Image Pro, <coughs> you should find a capture tab available. So the next thing to consider are USB ports. So 
Firstly, most cameras these days are USB 3 cameras, so they should be connected to USB 3 ports. You can connect to USB, USB 2 ports, and the camera may work, but it will always have reduced frame rates due to the reduced bandwidth available at USB 2, and you may encounter other issues and reliability problems. So please always connect to USB 3 ports, which can be identified by either being blue, as is shown on this picture on the left, or they may be labeled with the letters SS, which is short for super speed. USB cameras may need to be the only device on a hub. So they're quite greedy with bandwidth, so generally don't like sharing the hub. If the camera doesn't work or has all its intermittent or has any intermittent issues, you could always try another USB port and check in the device manager to see if the camera is the only device on a hub. In order to do this, again we return to the device device manager, and from the view tab we select we deselect the, the default option of devices by type and switch to devices by connection. And when you display, display devices by connection, you need to navigate through a series of turndowns to find your USB root hub, which I've done here on my computer. And here you can see I found my hub. And you can see that there are a number of devices as well as my camera connected to the hub. But this is potentially a problematic situation. In order to meet the requirement of having the camera as the only device on the root hub, you may need to install a USB card. Now, USB 3 cards are often supplied by the camera manufacturer, so if they do that, it's one they've tested and approved. You should certainly use it if it's available. Another thing to consider with USB ports is that the, cam the camera manufacturer may sp provide specific instructions. So for my Gryfax camera, I have two FAQs that, uh, that the, ca the camera manufacturer has supplied, and they each contain optimization tips on how to set up my USB ports. I'm not going to go into... Uh, what these um, camera performance um, tips are, as, as it's specific to this particular camera. But I do suggest you read your documentation and set the USB ports up as recommended by the camera manufacturer. So that's all of the troubleshooting. I'm just going to finally mention a couple of points about actually using ca uh, the capture very, very briefly. So using capture is fairly self-explanatory. Here we see uh, the capture uh, controls, the capture setup controls, and we see an exposure field and an exposure slider. We have an auto exposure button, an auto white balance button, and an option to display saturated pixels on the image. We have controls for bit depth, gain, and gamma. And if we check the camera settings, one of the things that users often want to do is acquire frames as quickly as possible. Just quickly to mention that if you select the option to acquire frames as fast as possible with this radio button, data will be streamed to memory, and the number of fast frames that can be acquired is restricted by the amount of RAM on the system. So you can see here that on my computer, I would be able to acquire 226 fast frames. If I check the box to also stream to disk, the number of fast frames is now limited by the free space of my acquisition drive. And I'm able to acquire many thousands of fast frames. So this is, seems to be a bit of a no-brainer, really. You usually want to use the option to stream to disk if you're looking to acquire as fast as possible. Performance of cameras can be improved with solid-state drives or with hard drives in a RAID 0 configuration. 